Hey there, I'm Patejo and this is my deck spotlight for what I call Quest Exodia OTK Mage, aka Quest Mage, Waygate Mage, Exodia Mage or OTK Mage. For the deck I took Dog's Ungoro OTK Mage as a basis and after testing it a bit I made a couple of changes to my liking. I swapped in another babbling book for a novice engineer to help finish the quest. I switched the loot order for Blood Mage Thanos, keeping the card draw but giving me more removal flexibility. I took out a Cold Light Oracle and put in a Volcanic Potion to help against early aggression. And I exchanged a Cabalus Tome for a second Blizzard to be able to stall the game a little bit longer. To build the original deck you need a total of 7240 dust. If you want to build the deck including my changes, you'll need a total of 8600 dust. So what the heck is Exodia and why is it in the deck's name? Exodia comes from the popular 90s TCG and anime called Yu-Gi-Oh! and is a win condition in which you have to collect the 5 pieces of Exodia. Once you have those 5 cards in your hand, you instantly win the game. Much like Exodia and Yu-Gi-Oh! this deck contains a combo that lets you win the game instantly with very few exceptions. You just need to survive long enough to collect Archmage Antonidas, two Sorcerer's Apprentices and two Molten Reflections. But also you need to fulfill the quest. And you need one more spell. No matter which one. Almost. So be prepared to find the last combo piece in the bottom of your deck. But once you have them all, you basically win the game. Unless your opponent has an ice block, disrupts one of your Molten Reflections, or you accidentally kill your own Sorcerer's Apprentices. So which cards do you keep in the Mulligan phase? You don't want to keep combo pieces in your starting hand, since they don't help you in the early game, and you most likely have to draw your entire deck anyways. As a rule of thumb, you can keep cards up to 3 mana that will help you stabilize in the early game. Of course you have to keep the quest in your starting hand. In the beginning of the game, you start working on the completion of your quest. Keep in mind that the coin also brings up the counter since it didn't originate in your deck. In the mid to late game, you try to cycle your deck to collect all the combo pieces. You play generated spell cards to complete the quest and you disrupt your opponent's board to stay alive until you can use your combo. When everything is set, you are ready to go. You need at least 8 mana to complete the combo. First you play the two Sorcerer's Apprentices. After that you copy them with the Molten Reflections, which reduces the mana cost of your spells by 4. Then you play your quest reward, Time Warp, to get another turn immediately after you hit the end button. Since you have full mana again, you can now play Archmage Antonidas and just need to play one more spell to start an infinite chain of fireballs. Then you can happily blast away your opponent no matter how much life or armor he has. As a demonstration, I'm now going to show you an example of how the deck is played. I'm playing against a druid and the cards I get in the mulligan are fine, so I keep all of them. It turns out that he plays a quest druid. He needs to summon 5 minions with 5 or more attack to get Barnabas, who reduces the cost of all his minions in his deck to 0. Instead of playing the quest, I start off with a babbling book to get something on the board and to see what spell I get from it. Luckily, it's an ice block. In turn 2, the druid ramps up with wild growth. Now it's time to play the quest and get the first counters on it, with the coin followed by a glyph, 
from which I decide to take Ice Block because I'm expecting to face some big minions. Another babbling book gives me Blizzard, which might come in handy later. After that I play the ice block from the glyph, to put the quest counter at 2 and to have a safeguard in place. Next, the ramped up druid plays a 5-5 stealth minion. I then play another glyph to generate another spell for the quest and decide to take the Vaporize instead of the Ice Block because I already played one and I have one in hand. Also I can use the Vaporize to get the quest counter up to 3. He falls into my trap and I'm safe for now. So far his quest counter is on 1 out of 5 and he ramps up again. I use an Arcanologist to pull another ice block out of my deck and I keep cycling the deck since there is no immediate danger on the board. This changes in the next round when he innervates out a 12-12 Tyrantus. Since I can't target it with spells, I use the blizzard from the babbling book to freeze the big guy and to add to my quest counter. The druid draws cards but plays nothing. His quest counter is on 2. I don't have enough mana to play Blizzard and Doomsayer so I keep cycling my deck and then pull out another ice block. An the pack. He copies his Tyrantus and also finishes his quest by putting a 5-1 minion with Adapt on the board. I play Blizzard and Doomsayer but still trade into one of his minions in case he can kill the Doomsayer. He indeed is able to kill it and then gives his Tyrantuses divine shield by adapting them. I play an Ice Barrier and Frostbolt to make room in my hand. And then desperately draw cards with a Cold Light Oracle.
He plays Barnabas to get zero mana minions in his deck. Then plays another minion. And then triggers my first ice block. I again try to clear the board with Blizzard and Doomsayer and just hope that he can't defend it this time. Thankfully, he can't kill it this time, and I clear the board. I put up another ice block, carefully selecting the one that didn't start in my deck, to get the quest counter to 5 out of 6. Also, I play a Kabbalist Tome, but unfortunately get two 10 mana spells. The druid then refills his board. I then play Frost Nova to protect my ice block and to finish the quest with Shatter. He builds more pressure on the board, but I draw one more combo piece and kill his scenarios with a pyroblast. My opponent proceeds to trigger my next ice block. Then I draw my last combo piece, and the game is won. Sit back and enjoy. Thank you for checking out this deck spotlight. If you have any improvements or suggestions, feel free to start a discussion in the comment section below. Thanks for watching!